In this video I want to demonstrate how to define dependencies or conditions in ePlan Cogeneer. First, I show you the macros in the sample library that I will use in the designer later on. Most of the macros are window macros, which means they cannot be placed without pages. Therefore every macro typical starts with an empty basic page like this one. I want to generate a power supply and some enclosure equipment with different optional parts. This is the basic macro for the power supply. In addition, there is a measuring transducer. When the related option is selected in the configurator that I will create later on, this macro will be placed on top of the basic power supply. Now let's have a look at the macros for the enclosure equipment. This one contains a single wire that is used as power supply for an enclosure light. The next one is similar and is used as power supply for a receptacle. These wires will be placed on top of the basic power supply if the related enclosure equipment is selected. The following macros will be used for the enclosure equipment itself. This is an interruption point that is connected to the single wire for the enclosure light. The next one is an angle that is used to redirect the connection. And this one is the enclosure light. The macro contains two placeholder objects. They contain variables which are connected to properties of the macro. The value of this variable is used as connection point designation of the bus bar. The variables of a macro are displayed in the designer, which means, I can make them configurable. The other placeholder object contains three variables. I will use them as counters for the device tags, and to provide a possibility to enter a free path function text in the configurator. That's all I need for the lighting. I will use the following macros for a receptacle in the enclosure. They are structured similarly. This macro contains another interruption point. Then there is the single angle to redirect the connection. And this one is the receptacle. Again, there are two placeholder objects. I will use them in the same way as for the lighting. The first one is connected to the connection point of the bus bar. And the second one is connected to the device tags of the receptacle itself and the circuit breaker. In addition it will be possible to enter a free path function text. These are all macros that I use in this demonstration. When all possible options are selected in the configurator the result of the generation should look like this. All macros are assembled on two schematic pages, one for the power supply, and one for the enclosure equipment. Now let's have a look at the designer of ePlan Cogeneer. In this part of the video I will demonstrate how to define dependencies in the designer of ePlan Cogeneer. Therefore I have prepared three macro typicals and added all the macros that I have shown a minute ago. This one contains all macros that are related to the power supply. Because I want to focus on how to define dependencies, I already entered all structure information in the macro typicals. The structure information that I entered for the first macro are inherited by the following macros. The page template and the basic power supply are set to always active. The measuring transducer should be optional, that's why I set it to configure. Now I have to enter a formula based on a configuration variable. Let's create one. I want to create a simple yes or no option, so I choose a Boolean variable. The display name I enter here is shown in the project builder. I set the variable to mandatory, which means the engineer in the project builder has to set a value for this option. Otherwise the generation cannot be carried out. OK, now I can reference this macro with the configuration variable. As soon as I type the equal sign, all available configuration variables are shown in a drop-down list. I select it. And that's it. This macro typical contains the obligatory page template and the single wires that are used as power supply for the enclosure equipment. Depending on the selected option in the configurator only one 
both or none of them are needed when generating the schematic. Again, I need a configuration variable to set this up. But this time there are more options. That's why I choose a variable of type string. It should be possible to choose between light, receptacle, both or none of them. For every option I add one predefined value for the configuration variable. OK, now I can use these predefined values to set up conditions in my formulas for the macros. So, how does the formula look like now? I start the formula in the same way as in the last macro typical. But this time I want to check the selected value. The page template should be used for all values, except of the value, none. And that's the expression I enter in the formula. For the next macro I want to set up an alternating condition. It should be used when the values, light, or, both, are selected. When entering the formula, the drop-down list doesn't appear automatically after the, or, expression. I force it to appear by pressing control and space at the same time. For the next macro I need the same condition with a small modification. Therefore I copy and paste the formula. Now I only have to replace the value, light, by the value, receptacle. And that's all. All possible variants are covered. OK, let's move on to the enclosure equipment. In this macro typical I need the same configuration variable and the same predefined values as for the single wires. But I don't have to enter them manually each time. I can use copy and paste here too. Therefore I switch back to the previous macro typical to get the predefined values from the list. And the conditions that I need in this macro typical are similar too. The page template should be used when generating the schematic for all values except the value, none. The following three macros all belong to the functionality, light. Therefore I need the same condition for all three of them. They should be used when generating the schematic for the values, light, or, both. In the detailed view of the third macro you can see the variables of the placeholder objects that I have shown in the first part of the video. Here I have entered fixed values. The last three macros in the list belong to the functionality, receptacle. Again, I modify the formula for the condition slightly by replacing the value, light, by, receptacle. In the detailed view of the macro that contains the receptacle itself, you can see the variables of the placeholder objects. But this time I need a condition here. Otherwise I would have the same device tag twice in the schematic. I can set this up by using an if then else condition. If the value both is selected, then the counter should be 5, else, it should be 4, like for the enclosure light. I can use the same condition for the counter of the circuit breaker. But this time the counter should be 3 instead of 2, when the value, both, is selected in the configurator. OK, that's all I need for this small demonstration. All dependencies are defined. Now let's have a look at the typical groups. I already have created one and added the three macro typicals that I have edited in this demonstration. I have to summarize the macro typicals, because they should be generated in one go. 
otherwise the macro typicals will be handled separately in the configurator and the conditions won't apply properly. In addition, I can define the user interface of the configurator in the project builder. As you can see the configuration variables are displayed in the detailed view of the macro typicals, but they are not yet defined in the upper section. The configuration variables, that I define here, are shown in the project builder. I have to do this manually for the boolean variable. But for variables, that contain predefined values, I can do this by clicking on this button. I only have to enter the display name and set it to, mandatory. The reference to the macro typical is created automatically, and the selected values will be handed over to the macro typicals when generating the schematic. For other variables I have to set up the reference manually. Working this way, I can be sure, that the same values are used for all macro typicals. My conditions will apply properly. OK, the last step is to create a configurator. The only thing to do here is to add the typical group. And that's all. Now let's have a look at the configurator in the project builder. Then I can check if everything works as expected. In this part of the video I want to check if all variants are generated as planned. For bigger projects, it's easier to open the project builder on a second display, and to check the conditions immediately when setting them up. At first, I select the target project I want to generate in. Then I open the configurator, that contains the typical group that I want to configure. The first variant should contain only the basic power supply without any additional options. The result is correct. The measuring transducer is not used and the enclosure equipment isn't available. OK, now I want to have the measuring transducer in the power supply, but still no enclosure equipment. And the result is correct too. As you can see, the single wires for the power supply of the enclosure equipment are only used, if there is any enclosure equipment. Let's select the option, light, and generate the next variant. There is a new page in the target project. And there is the enclosure light. The values, that I have entered in the designer for this macro are used for the circuit breaker and the bus bar. But what about the power supply? Only one of the single wires is used. So far so good. Let's switch to the option, receptacle, and see what happens. There it is. As you can see, the same values are used for the circuit breaker and the bus bar, because there is no light in the enclosure. And on the other page the other single wire is used. That's correct too. Now I generate the last variant. I select the option, both, and generate the configuration again. And there we are. All relevant macros are used for the enclosure equipment. The counter for the circuit breaker and the connection point of the bus bar are increased by one for the receptacle. And on the other page, both single wires are used. Everything works as planned. All conditions apply properly.